and welcome to another episode of Full Bar. In today's video I want to show you how to use environmental variables and how to use it to deploy the same code into different stages using serverless framework and AWS Lambda and Dynamo and other resources. If you're interested in watching more content like this from serverless and AWS and cloud and software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> This is a video that has been requested a couple of times that you want to know every time I talk about environmental variables you want to know how to use them with different stages so I will show you in this video. So what is an environmental variable? An environmental variable is a variable that will change dynamically depending on where the code is running. So you will keep the same code but then you will have these variables that depends on which environment the code is running. We use environmental variables to define databases or different licenses or different passwords or different things that the system might be different if they are running in development or if they are running in production. So for example, if we want to scale our system, we might want to scale it smaller in the development than in production. Or if we want to use databases, we want to connect to one database in development and one database different in lean production. So we need them because of that. We usually have two or three different stages. Usually it's development, testing and production, sometimes it's development and production. And we want to have the same code, but just with the slight change in configurations and environmental variables allow us to do that in a very dynamic way. So I will show you how to do this with code. It will be very simple. We will grab one project that I already have been working. That is the Dynamo Basic Operations code. I will leave you the link of the Git repo on the description. And I will modify it to have two stages, development and production, and to connect to two different Dynamo databases using the same serverless framework code and the same JavaScript code. So you will see how with a small tweak we can use these uh, environmental variables in different stages. So let's get the code from Git. From this repo, I'll leave you the repo in the description box and I will just check out that code and do the modifications on top of it. So I will open that code with my editor, with Atom, and then I will go to the serverless YAML in the custom where we have defined the name of the database. We have been using the environmental variables to define the name of the database. So I will do a small change there. So then we can have multiple environments. So I will add, instead of custom settings and the name of the variable, I will have custom, my stage, that is coming from the provider, from the stage, and then I will have settings. Then I will have the name of the stage, in this case dev, and then the environmental variables. If we want to have prod then I will put prod under. It's important now that the two databases have different names so I will rename items table to items dev and items prod because we will have two databases one for development and one for production and now we need to change in the provider environment property to find the settings depending on what is in the custom my state. For dev it will grab the environmental variables from dev and for prod it will grab the environmental variables for prod. We can define as many variables we want under these properties, dev and prop, and they will be picked up because of this provider.environment property here. So basically those are the two changes we need to do in order to get this working properly. The only thing we need to do now is to find again this items table for Dynamo because now the path is changed. Now it's under settings and a stage. So we need to go where we are calling this in the serverless YAML, that is in the role statements and in the definition of the table and rename that. So I will add self custom my state to the name and I will do exactly the same in the table definition. If not, this variable won't be fine because that's not the right path for it. The code is available in GitHub, so you can go and check it out there. Now it's as straightforward as using that environmental variable as we have been using it, so we don't need even to touch the JavaScript code for this, it just works. Now we will deploy. To deploy in a stage, you just do sls deploy minus s and then the name of the stage, in our case dev for development. And now this will deploy development and I will speed this up as always as this takes a couple of minutes. And then when we finish deploying to develop, we are going to deploy to production and we do exactly the same. sls deploy 
minus s prod. That's the name of the stage where we are deploying. And again, I will speed this up. And now, if you pay attention to the service information that you get when you finish deploying, you can see that the endpoints are a little bit different. Instead of having slash dev item, they have a slash prod item. And then the functions are the same. They have the name of the project, that is serverless dynamo basic operation dash prod, that is the stage. And then the name of the function. And then if we check also the stage in the service information is changed to prod. So serverless framework has taken care of doing all this renaming. If we go to Dynamo in AWS and we go to the tables, then we can see now that we have two tables, one for dev and one for prod. And whenever we do an operation in either stage, we will have the items stored in the right state. So this was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or things you would like to see in the future, just leave them in the comment box below because I always like to know what are the type of things you want to watch. So around here, as always, you can find other videos from my channel for you to watch. So if you want, go ahead and click and keep on watching and I see you in the next episode of FUBAR. Ciao!